Hi, I'm Drew. Welcome to the Baker's Woodshop video podcast for this June of 2022. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are most welcome. Thank you for joining me here, and thank you for inviting me into your homes, laps, hands, well, just however you happen to be viewing this program. Well, things are starting to get back into a flow here, obviously. Podcast, picking back up. First off, I want to talk about uh, our last video. Yeah, a uh, little unexpected, that video. I <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get to it so fast or so quick. Believe it or not, that entire thing, from the time it was shot to the time it was uploaded, it was about five days, which originally that's what I wanted, but um, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to do it, and then I did it. So, yeah, when we moved into this place, there was no doorbell cover, and I don't know why they took it. It was there in the pictures, and I remember it when we came for the inspection. At least I think it was there for the inspection. So it's kind of one of those, why? Why take it? Why get rid of it? Don't know. Don't know. So we took a trip to the hardware store the week before I shot that. And while we were there, we looked for doorbell covers, and they just had the whole doorbell unit. So I said, okay, plan B. And I quickly went uh, to where the plywood was, and I just got a simple a sheet of eighth-inch craft plywood. You know, it wasn't even that big of a sheet. It was like one foot by two foot, I think, something like that. Not very much. Eighth-inch thick. And put out my lines, went from there, and well, now you see the result uh, there on the video. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, kind of unexpected, but it happened. You know, I'm pleased with the way it turned out. Had a little, little bit of a tough time, mostly because of a few errors on my part, but it still worked out great. I'm very pleased with it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and it's the first time I did a video without doing the shopsmith. That wasn't podcast related. Yeah, I, that's a, uh, that's a bit of a difference. <laughs> yeah, I use my old scroll saw. I, I don't get to use that too much, but I love having it. I really do. So, yeah, uh, I will say though that doorbell cover is not done. Uh, there still has to be like some kind of decorative sticker or something put on it. We're still, it's not top priority. I'll, I'll say that we've had a few other issues that say, Nope, we got to do this. We got to do that. So yeah, but I am going to shoot another video. Uh, even though this garage is a bloody, mess. I think is the best way to put it. All right. Boxes everywhere. Boxes we don't use are everywhere even. Well, not every well, no, they're kind of everywhere. Boxes from packages and things we've packed that aren't broken down or behind the camera over to my left here or boxes we've broken down cuz we're done with them, but we've gotten rid of a bunch. Fortunately, there are people who need boxes, but still it's like, ah. Uh... So, but the video I'm going to try to shoot, I'm planning it out and deciding what do I need to cover and how can I shoot it in this confined space of storage, is safety. I've been meaning to do a safety video. I'd hoped I could do it in a larger space, but now I'm going to do it... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do it with a smaller space. I just have to plan things out bit by bit. So, and you know how important safety is. I say it in every uh, project video, from our lathe duplicator to our bandsaw, and of course, that video that uh, we just uploaded. So it's on the to-do list. I'll, I'll say that, it is on the to-do list. I know I'm going to cover, of course, uh, eye protection, hearing protection, read the manuals, but there are other safety tips that you probably might not have thought of. 
and I'm going to try to cover them all. If I don't, your tips will be more than welcome to be left in the comments when I do that video. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll get it all. Looking around, it might be a little tough, but I'm going to get it. In the uh, Shopsmith video community, there's been a lot of talk of uh, one thing. These. Table inserts. Uh, people have been talking about how to install them properly. People have been talking about how to make them. Uh, today's Shopsmith uh, did a video about showing how to make them. Unfortunately, that video doesn't 100% fit me because I'm working with a Mark V from 1954. The greeny, as they call them, because of the green paint. But eventually, Mark Shopsmith would call that one the Mark V 500. And although, really, when they came out with that, I think the motor was different. The one, the insert he used uh, in that video fits the 510 and 520 table saw setup. Uh, I don't have that, and that's on my to-get list because I refuse to use this thing as a table saw. Because of why? Safety. See? See? I'm covering it right there. <laughs> right there. So, <clears throat> but you can find these old ones online. I almost considered getting a few, but I chose not to because I knew, nope, I want to upgrade. Now, this is just the table saw, just the base table saw. There are actually several of these. <clears throat> you know, there's one for your drill press, which is just a round hole, and you can also use that for your routing and shaping. There's one that's squared, kind of in the middle, and that's for, um, for molding. You know, yeah, you can actually make your own molding on a shopsmith. A lot of people probably wouldn't, but I'd like to. It'd be very nice. And then, of course, um, also for the table saw, you've the dado stack. You know, have enough wide. And then there's what's known as a zero clearance, where basically this is the width of your blade at max height. So it's a very thin... Very thin, yeah, probably more so. You know, it's a little hard to... Now, <clears throat> when I got my stuff, it did come with some table inserts, but they don't go with this machine, I don't believe. Uh, one, they're shorter. They're wider. But oddly enough, it's some of the same inserts. In fact, you know, there's one right here. Let me do a comparison for you. Yeah. See? Wider. So, I don't know what happened there. In fact, there's... What holds that down? There's nothing to hold that down. It just sits in there. Well, there's a little tab here. I wonder if that's part of it. But, anyway... Yeah. <sighs> that... I was going to talk more about this, but then I've decided kind of not to because it has been covered on other channels, like My Growth Rings, Scott talks about them, and of course, today's Shopsmith, you know, they actually show you how to build them out of uh, Poplar, oddly enough. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go cover that. In fact, I'm going to leave you a link right up here now. Yeah, I could do it with I could do it with YouTube videos, but I can't do it with uh, website stuff. Hmm. Uh, but that link is going to be the one for today's Shopsmith when they make their table inserts. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I'll be able to be upgraded to that point one day. You know, you know, maybe if Shopsmith would. Sponsor the program? Huh? Okay. Anybody out there work for Shopsmith and want to help sponsor this? Come on. Your tool is number one in my shop. 
80 to 85% of what I will do will be on the shopsmith. I can't really say anybody out there know anybody because I know there's somebody out there who is a subscriber to my channel who does, and I'm not going to... S no, I'm not going to go there. Nope, you won't hear it out of me, Scott. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No. Yeah, I'd love to have Shopsmith sponsor the program because I love this tool. I really do. I love my Mark V. I'd retrofit this old thing to have a power probe, but I love this thing. It's a... It's, I, I'm so used to limitations, and this tool really helps that, because you're in a limited space, but you have everything you need. It's great. It's great. I have my lathe, I have my table saw, drill press, disc sander, you even have a horizontal boring machine. How many woodworkers can have that in their shop? And I know what you're thinking, why do you need a horizontal boring machine in a woodworking shop? I'll give you a great example. I actually just rewatched the video. Norm Abrams' New Yankee Workshop. He was building a canopy bed, and he did the uh, posts in two parts. There's the lower part, which attached to the headboard and footboard, and then there's an upper part, which attaches to the main canopy. Well, you can't do that all on the lathe. You have to do it in parts, of course. And one end had a tenon, the other end had a hole. Well, how do you drill the hole without, you know, it's like you either have to drill the hole first and then pray you're dead center on both ends when you round out your shape or you have to do it after. Well, how do you do that when your piece is like this tall? You know, you can't really fit that on the drill press very easily. Shopsmith, you can do it. You just lower the table. Hey, look at that. I'm doing a demonstration of a shopsmith. Okay, you have your drill chuck, you line things up with the center, and then in you go. Let's take this back up to a comfortable height for me. Good enough. Wow, I was actually the first time I actually did that. I did a demonstration in a podcast. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, you got your other accessories, you know, the bandsaw, jointer, you know, uh, there's a planer. I'd love to have that. And few other things, but yeah, it's a great multi-tool. It's good to have an all-in-one. I like this thing. Yeah, it's an older model, but she's still good. <laughs> good old shopsmith. Alright, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover, and if I go on from here, I'm going to start rambling. I don't want to do that. So, um, if you want to help support this channel, I still have my GoFundMe. Link is in the description below. Okay? Uh, you can also subscribe. That helps support. Like this video. Comment down below. You know, I don't mind a little feedback, people. You know, it's, it's good to hear out of our subscribers and our viewers. You know, those are ways you can help support our channel if you don't feel like contributing a little cash, but... You know, it's up to you. Alright? So, yeah. And hopefully, I will see you next time, right here, on the Beggar's Woodshop.